Most hip hop fans know rapper BG, formerly of the Hot Boys, is currently serving a 14 year prison term for weapons charges. Now, exactly how he got into that predicament is an interesting story. November 3rd, 2009, Christopher Dorsey, AKA BG, was pulled over in a Chevy Tahoe by the New Orleans police on what was called a routine traffic stop. BG was the driver. Two other men were passengers and inside the vehicle were firearms. Also, the Tahoe BG was driving was stolen from an Avis rental car outlet. The two men riding with BG were Demande Lee Pollard and Gerard Fettison, workers for Telly Hankton, who at the time was declared the city's most dangerous crime figure by New Orleans Mayor Mitch Landro. Three guns were recovered in the stolen Chevy Tahoe and two of those guns were stolen. Pollard tried to take the case saying the guns were his and ended up getting a 30 month prison term for obstructing justice. BG went to jail. He already had a lot of felonies, so he was facing a lot of time. And not long after he got to jail, he was recorded on the jail phone calling Fettison and incriminating both himself and Walter Mooney Porter, the chief hitman for Wild Telly. BG referenced that Porter, AKA Mooney, and himself had recently tried to shoot two people in a drive-by on behalf of Telly Hankton. Telly and Porter have been convicted of many murders and are now both serving life sentences. Fettison, the man who received that phone call from BG, ended up getting 22 years as part of the Hankton Rico case for obstructing justice and possession of firearms. Now, why such a long sentence for Fettison? Well, the federal government presented a lot of evidence that Fettison was also one of Telly's shooters and had been involved in several attempted homicides over the years. So that's why he got 22 years. And that's the guy who BG was riding in the car with. And that's one of the first people BG called when he got to jail and discussed past crimes. So it appears that BG really was a hot boy working for at the time, New Orleans most violent criminal organization, possibly even as a shooter. It's unclear when BG will be released, possibly as early as next year. Prison photos of him show him looking healthy, happy, and uh, he's already been down for 10 plus years. Uh, he should be home soon. When BG was 12 years old in 1992, he got signed to Cash Money Records, a label that by the end of the decade would become scooped up by mega media conglomerate Universal Music Group and grow to be one of the most prominent hip hop labels. Um, and from there, uh, one of the most popular entities in pop culture to what is now the most dominant force um, in pop culture. Uh, BG's 1999 hit Bling Bling is really kind of a seminal song because the word bling and the phrase bling bling have become part of everyday American language. Even the kind of people that watch Fox News say bling. And it's interesting to think that the phrase was coined by a guy who really was from deep in the trenches of the New Orleans streets, according to the federal government and according to what he's been convicted of. Now, BG grew up in the same uptown New Orleans neighborhood as Wild Telly Hankton and his family. And Cash Money Records founders, Brian Baby Williams and Slim Williams, were linked to the Hankton family by the DEA very early on, and the DEA claims that they got money from uh, Telly's older cousin or uncle, a guy named George Cup Hankton, as part of the initial cash influx to start Cash Money Records. Not the only money, but some of the money. Now, whether that's true, I mean, the Williams brothers never got charged in anything, so who knows? So in the early 2000s, uh, cash money, at what appeared to be the height of their success, a lot of people started jumping ship. And BG was the first one to go. And then Manny Fresh, who made all the beats from all the seminal uh, hits we remember from back then, bling bling, back that ass up, many other things. Uh, he left in the dispute over getting paid and it seemed like cash money was going down. But as we know, their biggest days were ahead of them, Little Wayne, uh, rose up to be for a while, you know, maybe the biggest rapper in the world in terms of popularity. And Lil Wayne went on to have his own record label, Young Money, that that uh, just signed Drake and Nicki Minaj. And Drake 
is one of the biggest pop stars of the last 20 years, period. And you, you can't look at a Drake song without seeing the direct line back to the Hot Boys. And at least in BG's case, uh, the Hot Boys really were that and were involved in uh, pretty serious stuff with people like the Hanktons who were as wild as it comes. A wild Telly Hankton, who ended up in 2016 being convicted on a bunch of uh, uh, racketeering and corrupt organization, RICO charges. Uh, he and many of the other Hankton family members were given long federal prison terms, but Telly Hankton's not in federal prison. He was also convicted along with some of his hitmen like Walter Mooney Porter of murders by the state of Louisiana, and he's currently doing a life sentence in the state of Louisiana. George Cup Hankton uh, uh, cast a large shadow over the New Orleans drug trade from his Holly Grove neighborhood, which is where Lil Wayne is also from. On December 7th of 2007, George Cup Hankton was gunned down in the Girktown neighborhood of New Orleans. Years prior to his murder in 2007, he mentored Wild Telly, who was his younger cousin, in the ways of the game. According to those same DEA informants, Baby, Birdman Williams, and Cup Hankton were especially close. One of the murders Wild Telly Hankton's doing his Louisiana life uh, bid for was revenge for the people that killed his older cousin, Cup. For the second time this summer, prosecutors will try Telly Hankton. It's one of our most dangerous and wanted subjects. Now behind bars and on trial again for murder, Hankton is accused of running down Darnell Stewart on Claiborne Avenue in Central City and shooting him in the face. Back in the early 90s when Cup Hankton was still alive and Telly Hankton was young, uh, the two of them were actually observed and recorded by the DEA hanging out with a lot of different people, but two of the people they hung out with a lot were Baby and Slim founders of Cash Money Records. Perhaps the whole thing about uh, them getting money from the Hankins just came from the DEA seeing them together. Maybe it's not true. Uh, in the world of entertainment, whether it's Hollywood movies or rap music, and this goes all the way back to the founding of Hollywood, which was founded by predominantly Jewish gangsters from New York, Cleveland, who came out west to start this new business, the movie business, uh, gangsters and entertainers have always been tied together. I mean, there's only, for young guys who are out hanging out in the nightlife of any city, who has money? Entertainers, athletes, and gangsters. So the Williams brothers definitely were friends with the Hankins, who were at one time New Orleans' most feared uh, crime group. Does it mean they really got money from the Hanktons? Maybe, but maybe not. Now, Cup Hankton was just as violent uh, in his day as Wild Telly. He was arrested and charged with multiple homicides, but he beat them all, and then he was eventually killed in 2007. Cash Money Records is, is in ascension. They're big deal. The Hanktons are still on the streets, so if they did invest money with Cash Money, I mean, it seems like they would have got enough back to get out of the streets, but Telly Hankton was known at this time to only sell quarter and half kilos and up. Uh, DEA informants said that he would uh, buy five or six kilos a couple times a month and then distribute them uh, around the neighborhood in uptown New Orleans. He never used cell phones. As Cash Money's first incarnation was starting to fall apart, the Hanktons got into a war with gangsters uh, Darnell Derny Stewart and Jesse Tutu Reed. By 2007, it was an all-out war. Derny Stewart and Tutu Reed were arrested for Cup Hankton's murder, but like most murder cases in New Orleans at that time, they just sat in jail and the charges got dropped and they were back out on the streets and they were back at war with the Hankton's now led by Cup Hankton's younger cousin, Wild Telly and he was known as the most wanted criminal in New Orleans area. And if we're going to, you know, clean up New Orleans, we've got to clean up all the crime. One eyewitness was murdered and another was shot 17 times and survived. He is expected to testify. Until something's done, the murders are continued. And there's, we're losing, to, I mean, 
basically we're losing a generation. Um, Telly and his cousins, uh, several of his cousins, uh, joined up uh, with Cup uh, around 94-ish when uh, Telly was uh, 18. And they ran the organization for uh, roughly 15 years. A very long run, a lot of violence, a lot of bloodshed. While Telly Hankton's mother was indicted uh, in the case when this case came down a couple years ago. Um, Telly himself has been in prison uh, since around 2010, I believe, when he was indicted for a murder that was involved in a giant street war that erupted uh, in the Big Easy that was centerpiece in this racketeering trial. Uh, he's been locked up for about five years, and uh, Mooney Porter has also been locked up on other charges related to a contract murder. So this conflict breaks out in around 2004. So the, the organization had been up and running for about 10 years, maybe 12 years. And you had a group of uh, Hankton organization lieutenants led by a guy by the name of Brian Pluck Broussard. Uh, Broussard's uh, top henchmen were guys by the name of Darnell, Derny Stewart, and uh, Jesse Tutu Reed. These were kind of a, a formidable threesome that broke off in uh, in 2004 and started doing their own business. Telly Hankton and Mooney Porter killed. Journey Stewart and Tutu Reed. Brian Pluck Bussard was shot but wasn't killed. Uh, the Dirty Stewart and Reed murders were incredibly vicious and they were responses to Cup Hankton being murdered. Uh, the war broke out in around 04. In 2006, you had what was called the Center City Massacre, where prosecutors were pointing the finger at Telly Hankton for killing five young members of the Broussard uh, Stewart crew uh, in Center City, which is a district of New Orleans. Michael Anderson was accused of shooting five teens in Central City back in 2006, but federal prosecutors say he was not the one responsible. And instead, they're pointing the finger at Telly Hankton, a man who's been called the crime boss of New Orleans. It was dubbed the Central City Massacre. Five teens gunned down at the corner of Josephine and Daniel in June of 2006. The killings prompted then-Governor Kathleen Blanco to send the National Guard back to the city. Hankton was deemed New Orleans' most dangerous criminal by Mayor Mitch Landrieu and Police Chief Ronald Surpass back in 2011 running an alleged drug ring through Central City. In 2007, there were a series of shootings uh, which climaxed in December of that year with Cup Hankton being killed in front of a car wash. That spring of 2008 has got to be one of the most heinous murders ever uh, committed in the gangland uh, territory of the bayou. Uh, Telly Hankton and his cousin, Reese Hankton, were chasing Darnell Durney Stewart. They found him outside a club and began chasing him with their car. Governor Hankton is accused of running down Darnell Stewart on Claiborne Avenue in Central City and shooting him in the face. Car chase. Durney Stewart ended up crashing his car, getting on foot, and uh, running away from the uh, the Mustang that was being driven by Telly Hankton and Reese Hankton. They eventually caught up to Darnell Stewart and hit him with the car, sending him... Uh, witnesses say 10 feet in the air, uh, came down to the ground, car came to a stop. Kelly Hankton gets out of the car with a pistol, pistol whips Stewart in front of a group of people in front of a club called Jazz Daiquiri's and then unloads his clip into him at point blank range, killing him instantly. But the case has had a twisted past. One eyewitness was murdered and another was shot 17 times and survived. The owner of Jazz Daiquiri's, that club, was a witness to the killing and uh, testified in front of a grand jury, was going to testify at the 2011 trial, or did testify at the 2011 trial, but before that, Mooney Porter caught up to him and shot him 17 times to prevent that testimony. He survived and still testified. Well, 61-year-old Curtis Matthews was gunned down in front of the Jazz Daiquiri Lounge on Saturday night. He is the brother of John Matthews, who testified against Telly Hankton at his last trial. Mooney Porter goes and kills the owner of Jazz Daiquiri's brother as retaliation for the owner testifying. So this just got way out of hand. A ton of bodies dropping, just senseless murder. Tutu Reed lasted another year. Uh, in 2009, Tutu Reed was killed uh, by Mooney Porter and Telly Hankton on, on a porch in, uh, in New Orleans. They, they, they got out of a car and opened fire on him. Mooney Porter was known 
for a, being a two-fisted shooter would come out with two automatic weapons and his calling card were a lot of shell casings. Now, BG, which stands for Baby Gangster, his real name is Christopher Dorsey, he was allegedly a member of the Hankton organization after the, the arrest of BG in 2009 definitely raised some questions. I mean, he had already been implicated as, as being a, a, a drug runner, a, a, a drug dealer for the Hankton organization, but in the 09 arrest, uh, as I said, he's arrested, coming out of his girlfriend's house in an SUV, and in the SUV, he's with two reputed hitmen. They got uh, three automatic weapons with full jackets in them, and led to a lot of questions of, and 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 what what you know, what was going on here? What were they intending to do? And you know, BG got hit pretty hard. Uh, I believe he got a 14-year sentence. And uh, what's most interesting is uh, about BG, uh, in addition to his. Um, alleged drug dealing activities or the drug dealing activities with the Hankton organization was that in the trial that was going on uh, through most of June into early July, uh, BG's name and his rap lyrics uh, were, were brought into evidence. Uh, BG, well, first of all, he was caught on a wiretap talking with Mooney Porter about uh, shootings, murders, and attempted murders. Uh, he was caught on a DA wiretap talking to, you know, the main hitman of the Hankton organization. But uh, several of BG's rap lyrics actually made it into evidence at trial to um, go to Mooney Porter and Telly Hankton's uh, reputation of of, of, of of violence and bloodshed. Uh, one of, I think, the, the most prominent lyric that was shown out there was a rap that, uh, uh, a rap video, Mooney Porter appeared in this video, and uh, while, while BG was rapping, Mooney Porter was in the background, and then at the very end, one of his final lyrics uh, BG came and the video put his arm around uh, Mooney Porter and alluded uh, in a rap lyric saying, um, you'll get hit 50 times when my nigga Mooney around, uh, alluding to uh, Mooney's reputation for unloading a ton of, of ammunition and uh, shell casings. In fact, he was referencing specifically the 2-2 Reed murder where they found 50 shell casings. So uh, the Hankin organization is no longer. They were convicted in a giant racketeering murder case in New Orleans, but their legacy uh, of, of, of bloodshed, their legacy of wrecking havoc in the community obviously will last for a long time.